even share your views or ask us any questions, we want you guys to feel free to do so on our social media handles, which are right there at the bottom of the screen. And all you have to do is put hashtag help on Monday and hashtag why in the morning and ask and say whatever you would like to say. Do feel free. And so do remember that right before this, we had Youth and Politics with Alex Karanja. Right now, we are doing a help on Monday segment where we sit and discuss and bring awareness on different kinds of issues which people are going through either on a daily basis or just any health issues that people are going through. Today's particular health issue is one that we all have heard the name of, but maybe we don't know too much about it. It's called sickle cell disease. And I'd like for our viewers to actually introduce themselves and then to come in and tell us exactly why they don't like to be referred to as sicklers or survivors. And it seems like a very technical I don't know how to say. Uh, we have to we have to refer to them the right way. Is is all that they're asking for. So Karibuni, please welcome. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. So this is James Ochola, is that right? Yes, I'm James Ochola. Uh -huh. So sorry, this is Miss Napuri sitting next to me. Yes, my uh, name is Harriet Napuri. Harriet Napuri. Oh, please speak up. My, my name, name is Harriet Napuri. Harriet Napuri. Yes. Ah, sawa, sawa. Yes. Uh, so Harriet. Tell me how long you've been living with sickle cell, and then uh, Mr. James Ochoa can jump in and say, as a clinical uh, practitioner, exactly what it is. How long have you been living with it? Uh, um, I've been living with the condition for 27 years now. 27 years? Yes. So basically all your life? Yes. All your life? All my life. Hi, Abasi. What is sickle cell and, uh, anemia or sickle cell disease, and what's the difference between calling it sickle cell anemia and sickle cell disease? Okay. Uh, sickle cell disease, <coughs> it's, a, it's a disease that affects the hemoglobin, this okay. is the, which is the red blood cells, mm. of which, which, actually, which carry oxygen mm. within the body to different places. Mm -hmm. Now, the normal, the normal shape of the, of the hemoglobin is yeah. by concave, which is a bit circular, but inside. But now, when you have the sickle cell, it has a deformity. Okay. When you get an infection, or you get into distress, it changes the shape. Huh. It forms a sickle, like the way the sickle that you use to cut grass. Right. It takes to that form. Mm. Oh, and like when it the does crescent that, moon. yes. Ah. And when it, that crescent moon, yes, yes. It, turns, it changes to that shape. And that's why it's called sickle cell. Now, the disease is now um, the, whole en the whole enclosure of all the uh, processes that occur during sickle cell. Okay. When you say sickle cell, an sickle cell anemia, mm -hmm. it is anemia caused, it is a byproduct of sickling. Okay. Now, why is it anemia? Why do you get anemia when you have sickle cell? Oh, before we go into why do we get anemia, yes. a little bit about the, ter the terminology. And in yeah. fact, I'd like for you to explain it. Uh, and then we'll come back to you and you'll tell us about um, the different diseases that come when you yeah. have sickle cell. Yeah. There is something I'd like for our viewers and our audience to get straight because I made a mistake as well when I was referring to you guys the wrong way. Uh, so kindly explain, what do you prefer to, uh, people who are having sickle cell, what do you prefer to be referred to as? Uh, we prefer to be called warriors okay. because um, of the challenges we go through each and every day. Because uh, we're living with sickle cell is really, I could say it's really hard. And uh, we try our best to be the, to be the best we can. Yes. We try just to fit in the society just like any other normal person, despite the, the defo deform deformed of ourselves. But we try to be just like normal people and um, that is why we don't refer, we, we don't we do not like to be called sicklers because actually we we, we are sicklers yes but as when we call us when we you call us sicklers that brings us down mm. yes because we have survived and we have fought that mm. so you're not surviving you have survived yes we have survived already yeah okay yeah. I see. Mm. I see, I see. So now we can go back to yeah. explaining um, yeah. what you were explaining before about the different kinds of, of diseases yeah. that fall under sickle cell. No, like now sickle cell now has, when you have sickle cell, this is what we call crisis. These are the episodes that come about with sickling. Okay. Now, the normal, hem the normal hemoglobin takes about 120 days mm -hmm. from the time it's produced to the time it dies out. Mm -hmm. With now the sickle cells, it takes 10 to 20 days. Only? Only. Wow. Now, that means the blood cells are destroyed much faster because they are deformed. That is one. Two, since 
black, the red pigment that we have on our palms mm -hmm. and the pigmentation that allows us to actually have this pigment. Right. Yeah, it's right. actually because of the hemoglobin. When it, it is produced, it when it destroyed too fast, it becomes lowered. What happens now? You become anemic and the blood is not able to carry enough oxygen. So you. it's not everybody that has sickle cell that has anemia? Not at any given point. Not at any given point. Yes. Anemia is just one of the diseases you can one get. Of this, one of the... When you have sickle cell. cell. Yes. Okay, so when you have anemia as a product of sickle cell, then you become sickle cell anemia. Anemic. What are some of the, anemic. Yes. What are some of the other diseases? So we can't refer to, we the, cannot refer to it as sickle cell anemia. It's yeah. the sickle cell disease. disease yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the other symptoms you would have would be something like jaundice, which is the yellowing of the eyes. Uh -huh. That is because when red blood cells are destroyed, they, they, there's a byproduct which is called bilirubin. It is elevated within the blood. When it becomes elevated, you'll realize the yellowing of the eyes and the palms. And when it becomes too much, you know there's a problem. Yes. Okay. I see. Then there's also, then there's what you call now the episodes they, they actually have, like now the painful episode is yeah. usually called a crisis. Yeah. Now with that, it means uh, the red blood cells have sickled and they are blocking the capillaries within a certain region of the body. Mm. When they do that, the nerves on that end become a bit heightened. Right. And, they, what they, what, and what that causes is, now you start feeling pain. And now that pain usually becomes from the joints, the hands, mm. parts of the muscles, and it is very severe. Mm. Now that is, that is a painful crisis or an occlusive crisis mm. because it is caused by occlusion. Then okay. there is there a plastic crisis. Now this one is when the bone marrow itself is not able to produce red blood cells at a very good enough rate. Mm. And now you actually end up having very low blood cells. And it is not because they're being destroyed, but it is because they're not being produced. Mm. Yes. Okay. Then, yeah, there's something like sequestration, which is now the splenic sequestration, mm. where the spleen enlarges and actually like goes, it becomes blocked and it becomes painful and eventually dies off on its own. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. And as a sickle cell warrior, <laughs> Harriet, yes. um, let me ask you: What are some of the things a warrior has to go, a sickle cell warrior goes through on a daily basis? What are some of the struggles, maybe, that you'd like to share with us? Um, one of the of the challenges that our warriors go through is the frequent episodes of pain. Frequent episodes of pain. Yes, the crisis, because with sickle cell you can you can be laughing at one minute and the, at the next minute you have to be admitted, maybe put in ICU for oxygen, because it has no sig signals. Like you cannot just tell that the next minute I'll be sick. At some time it just gets abrupt, and so it is really difficult for you to plan your life. And like say tomorrow I'll be doing this and this and that. So like to fit in a normal schedule of an, a person without mm. sickle cell. And then another challenge is that um, when, <coughs> let's say when you are, when, when we are going to hospital, mm. sometimes when you are in, in crisis, nobody cares about you, especially in public hospitals. You are in pain and you have to queue for a, for a whole day for you to be attended to. Like there was a time I, went, I was in crisis and I was taken to hospital at, at around 10 a.m. and I was being attended to at 4, mm. 4 p.m. What? And that was really... 10 a.m. Uh, you yes. went? Yes. Attendance, attending to you, the attendance you got from doctors was at 4 p.m.? At 4 p.m. And all yes. this time you were in pain? Yes. Uh -huh. So those are some of the challenges a warrior goes through. Mm -hmm. And then another one is... Uh, it's really hard for warriors to get employ em employed because you can, uh, like I said earlier, you can be well today and the next hour you are not well. So basically when you are employed, your boss will not really understand your condition mm. because you, you maybe you are supposed to be in work from Monday to Friday and uh, due to that condition you, you may find yourself maybe you only had to go to job for only two days, then the rest of the three days you are maybe admitted. I see. Yeah. Okay. So it is really hard for oh. warriors to be understood by their bosses and also get employment. It's really hard for warriors to be understood yes, by yes. their bosses. Yes, so most of them actually are mostly being fired 
and you know with our condition we have bills to pay because we are frequently in and out of hospital yeah. so the hospital bills are just crazy are just crazy and we yes. don't have any source of income to get off with that I see I yeah. see okay and um, uh, now that you've explained a kind of how it ha affects your life on a day-to-day -day basis I'd like for our uh, clinical practitioner to tell us how it affects the body you already said that um, what happens to the cells um, but maybe we can touch on what happens to the cells in such a way that it affects people in a different way because when we were discussing and uh, we're trying to find out about medication and everything she's touched she's touched on um, going to hospital and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing actually that medication is quite expensive on a day-to-day -day basis and even then everybody takes medication differently she may be taking once a day Another, uh, another sickle cell warrior will be taking maybe twice or another one will be taking four times a day. Could you touch on the differences of how people take them and what makes it this way? Okay, uh, now that comes in in terms of one, the parameters that are used. For you to be put on like say hydroxyurea, you need to be having frequent at least three episodes or crisis within a year. And there's also a danger of going into maybe stroke or uh, priapism, you are having, you're constantly having priapisms, which is a painful erection, continuous erection in a boy or in a, in a man. Wow. So, wow. when you have this happening, mm -hmm. you try to, to now raise the, this is what we call fetal hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin. Yes. It's, okay. it is an, it's a form of hemoglobin that is usually there when you're still a child, when you're still in the womb, but as you grow, it depletes. Now, to raise that, you'll be given a drug like hydroxyurea, which raises the fetal hemoglobin, okay. so that you actually reduce this number of cra crisis or episodes that this person goes into in a, in a given time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes. Now, they're given differently depending on one, the weight, the age, uh, the severity of your crisis. You'll find there are different parameters, and they're also tighter to where is your optimal dosage is. Ah, yes. Okay. So when they are tied to that, it is very specific to that client. Mm -hmm. I cannot give you the same drugs at the same dosage I give her. I need to actually tighter it to your. It is custom for you and custom for her. Yes, of course. Yes, it has to be. It's custom for everybody. Yes. Every yeah, your body. practitioner will go with you. Will see you. Will get to know. At what point, at what level does this, is this drug optimum for my client? Ah, yes. I see. All right. Well, thank you for explaining that much. And wow, <laughs> you know, this sounds like um, something that is, of course, we don't ask for it, which then brings me to the next question, genetics, you know. Since the, we've already dealt with the fact that, look, this can happen to you, can happen to anybody, can we talk about how people do acquire it, how it comes along? And then we'll talk about how it happened for you and touch a little bit about um, the personal story and the personal experiences that happened once you figured out that, once your parents figured out that this is what you had. So sickle cell is a genetic disease. Uh -huh. It's mainly transferred to the child via the mother and the father. Both parents have to transmit the sickle cell gene, which is the S gene. Now, they, we call them carriers. They do not need to actually be suffering from sickle cell disease, but they carry the gene itself. When they do that, when they have a child, there's a 25% chance of the child coming out a warrior or suffering from sickle cell. When that happens, when they come and give birth, when they transfer both genes to the child, that is the SS gene, it will go to the child. Now she'll be a full-blown warrior. She won't be a carrier. If she actually have half of the normal gene and half of the sickle cell gene, she would be a carrier. Oh, so there's a difference between a carrier and a and warrior. A, and a warrior, yes. yes. A carrier does not suffer from the normal disease symptoms. Okay, the like, warrior, like anemia and yes, jaundice. They don't. They are, they are just the same as you and me. Mm. But a warrior has both, she's, she has all the genes together. That means her cells are already deformed. All her cells are deformed. So she does not, she will actually suffer from the symptoms, but a carrier won't. Right. 
my yes. career won't. And there's something you said that, that I found quite interesting. For a, a warrior, in order for someone to be considered a warrior, not a carrier, yeah. both parents have to have had sickle cell. Gene. If, they must be carriers of the gene. Yes. If one parent has the gene and the other parent doesn't have the gene, then they cannot produce, they cannot a, child, produce a child. A warrior. A warrior. They, they have to produce just um, you know, a carrier. A car they can actually produce a carrier mm -hmm. or somebody who has normal, normal hemoglobin. I see, I see. Let me bring me to the next one. You know, um, <laughs> this must have been tough for your parents. You know, it's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And there's no parent who requests for any kind of hardship in their life when it comes to children. Most of the time when we're, children are born, they're bundles of joy. Mm -hmm. So please explain to us your journey, how it went um, when your parents first find out, found out. Because it's not something they found out immediately, is it? It's mm -hmm. not something they expected or even thought of. It never crossed their mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, until certain incident happened. Could you take us through that journey and speak up, please? Okay. Um, I was first diagnosed with sickle cell at the age of three. Okay. And that was after I had lost my two sisters of the same. So oh, wow. when my sisters died, they didn't know that it was sickle cell. But it was after their death that my mom then decided to take me for the sickle cell screening test. Uh -huh. And that is when I was diagnosed with sickle cell. Uh -huh. And from the age of three, uh, I was taking drugs, the paldrin and folic acid, for all that period of time. Every day it was like, you have to take a drug, each and every day. So like, drug and me were just best friends. I couldn't go a day without drugs. And now that uh, it was really a challenge for, for me to get those drugs each and every day because at no point were those drugs given to the hospitals that I went. So each time really? you go to hospital, yes. Each time you go to hospital and you are prescribed to take those drugs, you have to go and buy them outside from the pharmacies. So that was one of the challenges that I had to go through as um, a warrior. Not being able to find drugs as yes. a sickle cell warrior. Yes, mm -hmm. and I had to take drugs each and every day, just as I told you earlier. Yes, yes. So my journey was actually in and out of hospital because I was usually admitted. And with sickle cell, when you are young, you do most of the things. You just want to play like any other mm -hmm. normal child. Mm -hmm. You don't know what is really happening in your body. Yeah. You don't know your limits. Yeah. So I could really just do activities like any other normal child but every evening frequently like on a weekly basis uh -huh. I could get sick and get admitted like each and every week so a week does not pass and this is when you're a child yes. a week was not passing without you getting admitted yes yes wow okay uh -huh. go on and then uh, there is this part that uh, when I first realized that I had sickle cell I didn't really know what sickle cell was but I just when I was having pains in my joints, legs, sometimes fingers, I felt like this sickle cell must, must be a very strange thing because people around me were not having the same, were not undergoing the pain that I go through. Like I could see people going through, people could say I'm having a headache, stomachache, but for me, my pain was different. So I really thought like this sickle cell is really a very strange thing. Like how can I be getting like, um, sick and I only have a back pain, my legs are paining, my joints, my fingers. At some point I could go to school and I couldn't write anything because I had crisis on my fingers. You had crisis on your yes. fingers, the, 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 the pain that you yes, were saying. Yes, yes. So the to hold the pain was yes, a so problem. I couldn't hold the pain. Yeah. And you know for some teachers who don't understand, they can take you as a road uh, uh, student, you don't want to listen to them, you don't want to write. So that is when part of stigma began back then when I was in uh, nursery school. And then uh, there is this part of taking drugs each and every day. So you wake up in the morning and you want to go to play and your parent calls you and, uh, and she's like, uh, come and take your drugs. How have you forgotten to take your drugs? That was part of the stigma that be began hitting me when I was very, very young. So I could come back and take drugs and when going pa back to play, uh, other children could tell me, don't play with her because she has not taken her drugs. 
Her mom oh. will even beat you up for playing with her sword because she, she has, not, has taken. not taken the drugs. So I, that that was a really very low moment for me because I didn't know how to explain for them about sickle cell. Yeah. And yeah. you were you were you were young. They yes. were young. I, I was young. They were young, but they knew something was happening in me. You and knew something. Too. I also knew something, but I couldn't explain to them in details what was really happening. Yeah. yeah, and so the stigma began. And that is when the stigma began. Yeah, people not understanding what's going on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah. I see. So later, later on, in my, when I was growing up, uh, when I joined um, high school, there is this year that I didn't go to school at all in Form 2 back in 2008, because I started another complication where I heard um, pain in my stomach for for me being a warrior and when i was young i wasn't uh, i wasn't experiencing other pains like the headache as i told you earlier yeah, headache yeah. and the stomach pain i only had the crisis so when this pain of uh, when i had stomach pains i really felt um like oh i'm now becoming a real normal person like sickle cell has gone now i'm back to a normal <laughs> no, person, yeah, a normal person yes. with stomach aches yes with, with stomach aches and all those so i felt a bit happy but i didn't know that that was the worst part that even i said sickle, uh, the crisis is better than the, the stomach pain so from there i i went to hospital i was taken to hospital and um, I was misdiagnosed because by that time is when I was told the doctors ex examined me and I was told that I had a um, kidney failure. And you went to the, the hospital because of stomach pains? Yes. At which point you were quite happy thinking the sickle cell has I gone. gone and now, now you're normal. I'm normal. But and to I'm check out the stomach pains, you got misdiagnosed yes. and they told you that you, that you had kidney failure. I, uh, that I had kidney failure. So I thought probably... That's a very that, serious misdiagnosis. Yeah, exactly. And now from that point, so when I was um, misdiagnosed, I was told that I had um, kidney failure. And um, that was really hard for, for my parents to take it, especially because now she was thinking of taking me, you can imagine, of kidney failure. Yes. The only option is to be taken to India and maybe um, kidney transplant needs to be done to mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. so now i was at, at that process and then that doctor told us she the doctor gave us drugs mm -hmm. and um, the the drugs were quite expensive i remember by that time they were six thousand and now when i went home i took the drugs and um the pain worsened the pain oh, yeah, because yes. it's a wrong drug yes it for the wrong problem <laughs> wrong drug. so yeah. the pain wasn't and you and this um, this one i'm saying it for the first time actually i did not take the full the, the dose of the drugs i just took the drugs to the toilet because i told myself there is no way i'm going to be taking drugs that are increasing the pain so from there the doctor I told us to mm. go to see her after two weeks so when the two weeks are, were over, we went back, and this time my mom said, let's change the doctor. Yeah, so when yeah. we changed the second doctor, opinion. yes, now we went <laughs> for the second opinion. Because I was also reluctant, and I was feeling like, oh, I should just die, because I can't have sickle cell, I have kidney failure. Guy, what is too this? much. This is just too much for one person. So, <laughs> so <laughs> now I went, yes. uh, we went to see another doctor, and... Um, we told the doctor what we had gone through, we, the drugs that we had been given, and we are told that um, I had uh, kidney failure. And the doctor was so shocked. So she asked, she asked my mom, you were told that your daughter has uh, kidney failure? And I said, yes, we were told that. And that doctor was, was very shocked and said, no, it can't be the case, because if your daughter had kidney failure, you could already have buried her. So that made some hope on my mom mm, mm, and uh, mm. we really felt excited because now it was not kidney failure yeah. it was just a complication related to sickle cell yeah. so the doctor gave us another prescription of drugs and when i went home it worked and from that time mm. uh, the previous doctor he told me that i had kidney failure because of mm. the drugs that i take each and every day mm. so the drugs were like accumulated in my system and they had affected my kidneys mm. 
So from there, I was shocked, and, I, I, and that is when I felt that no, I'm not going to do any more drugs in my life. So I grew up yes. before that, mm. because I feel like you're going somewhere very interesting. No drugs anymore. Yes. No more medication. Yes. Pause, Hapo. <laughs> I shall come back to that one. Because <laughs> I want that, I want that, uh, I'm sure that will be an interesting one. Oh. Let's, I want to come back and get a little bit of expertise upon um, what, what, if what she's just been saying about getting, first of all, misdiagnosed. How in the world? Okay. Are the symptoms that similar? The problem is they do occur with similar to certain diseases. That is one. Two, with, uh, with sickle cell, I would say a lot of it is not, if you do not come from, if you are practicing in areas that sickle cell is not that much prevalent, you wouldn't see it that much. Mm -hmm. So it would be difficult to actually pinpoint it. Then secondly comes in in terms of history, medical history. Right. Now, when, see, when warriors are growing up, they usually see a pediatrician. Okay. all through being a child up to around 14 or years of age. Okay. Once they cross that sh threshold, their file, their file is no longer pediatric. It's taken to another department. With that, it actually gets mixed up with others. So there's no, no one following up on this patient from where they left off continuing. So if she leaves that, and remember, she's no longer seeing her, a nutrition. Mm. She's going to see a new doctor. Mm. The doctor will, doesn't really have the full history mm -hmm. as to what mm -hmm. has he been has happened. Just picked up has where they picked left up. off. You see where they mm. left off. Secondly, he he hasn't really gone through the journey with you or she, so it would be very difficult to really pinpoint where the issue is. That is one. So sometimes it's not a matter of it's a matter of also the system that we have if it was possible that they could actually continue on a single channel, yeah. they leave the pediatrician or a physician towards the same physicians they've had since birth or within the same system, whereby they continue on one journey, it would be able to maintain the same, mm -hmm. the same history, the file would go from pediatrics all the way mm -hmm. up. When it gets to adults, it's a bit different because the mm. It's a new, this is an, this is an adult, it's no longer a pediatric file. Yeah. So the history has to be collected again. That's a new journey starting all over. I see, yes. I see. And you know, uh, sorry to bring it up, but she did mention that she had lost two sisters because yes. of this. What are some of the uh, things you can say as a medical practitioner? What are some of the uh, things our parents can look at in their children when they're still very young so. to, to, to sort of um, pinpoint or to see that, hey, I feel like this is leading to a problem. Yeah, okay. One of them would be jaundice. That is the yellowing of the sclera of the eye. The eyeballs become yellowish. Okay. That is very easy to see, yeah. especially when, yeah. that would mean there's bilirubin in the system. It's called jaundice. Yes, jaundice. The yellowing of the eyes or even the palms of the hands. Okay. Secondly, there would be delayed milestones. They are a bit more frailer than other children, especially when they're still young, as they're growing up. They are younger, they tend to have frequent infections, a bit weaker, they tend to be a bit irritable easily at, at some point. They tend to get irritable over periods of time, and that one would realize it's when they're actually going through the painful crisis. But remember, when they're also very young, they're still protected by the fetal hemoglobin. But as it gets lower and as it gets depleted and the, the sickle cell hemoglobin, the H HBS goes up, mm -hmm. they also now tend to now get more into crisis ah. as the fetal hemoglobin is reducing and the sickle cell hemoglobin is going up. Yeah. So the crisis will increase. Some will actually start at around one year, they start having crisis. Others will even start at three years, like she said. Others will be diagnosed at two. Others even at four years. Yeah. But remember, all through, there are milestones you would have seen. You can actually see lower weight, more frailer, jaundice, frequent infections in and out of hospital. And you'd actually get to know hmm. there's something wrong. And 
also getting to know where exactly you are. The, because sickle cell is more prevalent within the malaria belt regions, that is around Nyanza. I'm glad you've touched on that. Yeah, that is around Nyanza and Western and around the coasts. Nyanza, Western, Western and, around and around the, the coasts. Coast. That's where sickle it cell is, is prevalent. More prevalent because, because of, of the mal it is more associated with malaria prone areas, especially in Kenya. Although even in the world it's the same. Same as the Middle East, Asia, and parts of the Mediterranean. Yeah. So it is still a disease. It's a global disease. Yeah, it of course, yes, yes. yes. So I, uh -huh. but still with that, we should remember with this age we are actually having intermarriages. Yeah. So yeah. right now sickle cell is also being found in areas that normally you wouldn't find sickle cell, mm. like even in the highlands. But now it's getting to be seen even in those areas. I see, I see. Yes. All right, thank you for that. Um, I want us to touch on, on, on what solutions we have late, uh, later on. Not later, we don't have much time, but lastly. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to ask right now, uh, kindly don't spend too much time on it, but um, maybe you can please tell me that interesting thing I was telling you to pause on. The fact that you're not taking drugs, you're not taking medication at all. Wow. How do you... Eh. <laughs> uh, what are you doing in place of the medication and the drugs? Okay, for me, uh, I first learned of my body and I, I understood that my body was um, a bit resistant for some drugs, especially when I, I take them for so long. Like for instance, if I, I was prescribed a drug today, it could be it could be effective right now when I take it. Mm -hmm. But I, I continue taking it over time, my body adapts the drug and it no longer works for me. So that is when I decided that I'm not going to use drugs and I'd rather use foods, foods. instead. Yes. So you're using foods to, to, to combat? Yes. Wow. What sorts of foods? Just in case someone is listening and they're like, hey, I'm a chikwa notebook na pen. Uh, okay. I use um, foods that um, are rich in iron, okay. like the beetroot and the terere, mm -hmm. uh, pumpkin leaves, and spinach mostly in my diet. And also take, uh, I hydrate myself more frequently, like water, water or any other fluids. And then, um, so I decided to study nutrition so that I could also manage my body, you see, the food that, the, like food is the only medicine that I take. So I, I as, uh, as much as I take the foods that are rich in iron, I also accompany them with the foods that uh, help in the absorption of iron. Like after I've taken a uh, food that is rich in iron, I take a uh, fruit, which is vitamin C, to enhance the absorption of iron. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, reduce foods that, um, hinder the absorption of iron in the body, which include the tea and uh, coffee, which have the component tannin, which binds the iron and stops its absorption. I see. Thank you so much for that. That's quite interesting. Uh, there was a very interesting way you had, uh, advice you had of, of, of getting rid of, not getting rid, but making sure our parents can or do not get children who have this. I liked that idea. What idea was that? Would you share it with the public um, before we cap up to yours? Yes. I, I could say that um, it is not easy to raise a child with a, a warrior because it is quite expensive and you really have to mm. sacrifice for them. Mm. So I, my advice is for couples, if you are falling in love for each other, please go and do the screening test, the sickle cell screening test, so that you just get to know if you are carriers. And uh, if you, by, by, by chance you get to find yourself that you're both carriers, please decide on whether you, have, you need to have children who are warriors so that you plan for them and you get prepared on how to raise them and get information about them. Mm -hmm. Because warriors are there to stay and they won't die at the age of six or 12 or, uh, they'll stay forever. Mm -hmm. So please get prepared, get information about sickle cell, go for counseling on how you will take care of your children before you tie your knot. Uh, before you tie your knot, go and get tested you as, as a couple and see if, you have, if you're carriers of this disease and then 
make a decision on whether or not you'd like to have a child because it's difficult to take care of that. Yeah. Kindly, can you can you give us uh, shortly some of the things that you feel are solutions to this issue that we're having, expensive medication and any other issues? Okay, some of the solutions that I think we could actually have when it pertains to sickle cell one would be having clear policies that would actually deal with sickle cell. Because if we look at the burden of the disease, even within our own economy, it's very high. Wow. It is very high. Imagine a mother who's the sole breadwinner, or a mother and a father who's a sole breadwinner. Every week, like she says, she was in hospital. Mm -hmm. It means Admitted. at any given point, one of them has to be in the hospital with her. That is a day of production lost. Now, the amount of money spent on hospitalization, it's a lot. So, if this money could have been placed in other activities, it would be a level of production in the economy. Her herself missing work, not being able to get employed, that denies the country workforce. Now, the one solution we can have for this would be create policies that would actually ensure that our warriors have more successful lives, have a better chance of, of, having, of having a ripe life that mm. would be full just like you and me. Right, living a normal life. Yes. Yeah. Among them would be actually, I would beg, I would not even beg, I would actually ask that the National Health Insurance Fund should be able to cater for them. NHIF should be able to cater yes, for sickle cell warriors. they should try ways. and actually bring in a program that would actually cater for them. Okay, okay. Because even if you look at some of the complications they have, some of them are very expensive to take care of. Mm. And if there's no cover, and let me say, most of the families affected by sickle cell are not from well-off families. They come from economically downtrodden, communities. Right. So if most of them are living below a dollar a day, Aye. how will they be able to take care of a very good premium? Mm, medication in, in plus insurance. And, insurance. and also taking that, and that remember admitting there, them there in the hospital There are children in the day. house who need to feed, who need to get clothes, who need to go to school. So it takes away from the whole family. Yeah, it's a yeah, cycle that yes. has to be broken at a point. Yeah. And the first point would be, one, create an avenue of actually ensuring that the healthcare is well taken care of. Two would be subsidizing drugs. If we say uh, a drug like hydroxyurea is around 40 shillings a tablet, so let's say she's supposed to use two. That means an, an average of 100 shillings on a single day which goes for 30 days, that's a month. So, how do we do that? Mm. It would be difficult for them to... It's quite difficult, yeah. yeah. Affordable medication, NHIF okay. funding, and Insurance. also departments. Yes, and, and policies that and would policies. actually create, and would make it safer and easier for our warriors to live fuller lives. That was wonderful. Yeah. I'm really glad that you guys came on set. And I'd like to ask, uh, lastly and finally, if there's anything you feel <laughs> you would like to say about this particular topic, please do feel free to say so before we uh, shut the topic down. Is there one last thing, my dear? Maybe a piece of advice to people to stay strong, continue being warriors, perhaps? Um, I could like to advise people living with sickle cell that uh, sickle cell is not a dead sentence. Uh, like many doctors are saying that your child will not live past the age of six, past the, the age of 18, and all those age limits. Uh, all I would like to say is God is the giver and the taker of life, and he is the one who has the final say. So whether you have sickle cell or not, you can, you can die at any time. 
So I would like to encourage people that to stay positive and uh, understand their bodies, know their limits, and love God and trust in God because God is the one who gave you sickle cell and he has a purpose for it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Asante sana, James Ochola. And thank you so much, Harriet Napori. I hope that you guys have had a good time on our set. I know I have, and I know I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing the information. I know that there's a lot we have not covered, but I'm sure we'll make time for that another time. And again, you guys, remember, it has been Health on Monday. We are here every single Monday to do this particular segment. Next week, I want you guys to, um, we're going to start this thing where we're doing a back and forth with our viewers. And so please, watch us to the review next week. Uh, today, we're not quite able to do it, but it's quite all right. Do still send in your thoughts and your views. Social media handles right down there. Joy underscore Mochache. My name is Joy Mochache. Thank you so much for tuning in. Coming up next is Valentine with The Man Talk.